Swag money bitch. Da dove nasce il tuo spirito da trappola? <ride> sì. Cosa che odi che si può dire? They love when you get mad. But I'm telling you are telling me the band, I'm telling you. One album. But the game was the other Vorrei sapere quattro frasi in friulano che hai imparato qui da noi. Aspetta che bevo? No, I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Operatic? Vocals? Yes. Oh, I don't like Spotify, I don't like uh, the streaming services. Three things you hate. Mm. People. Hi. Jade from Frozen Crown. I'm a dentist during the day and a singer by night. I'm sexy, I'm cute and I love the spotlight. But what I love even more is coffee. <sighs> On Instagram I've beaten all the records for the amount of coffee pictures posted every day. They call me the espresso lady. I tried to stop her. She's just insatiable. Hello everybody! So my guest today is Federico! <laughs> I have so many questions for him and not only by me, you will see we will have some surprises during this transmission today. So I'm really happy... Eh, it's wrong? <laughs> wrong? <laughs> so welcome Mr. Federico Mondelli! I don't like this, it's too... Sì. I'm really happy to have you here. <laughs> you too. <laughs> you are demonstrating. <laughs> Moderately happy. <laughs> Why did you choose this cup? Because this is, you know, uh, minimal. Yes. You know, it has no useless stuff around. It's just plain, you know. It's just uh, this represents me and my approach to, you know, to music since I, I suppose we're going to talk about music today. <laughs> also. Uh, Not only. <laughs> ah, okay. Your dream team band? Mm, Jeff Lewis. That, wow. that for sure. Mm, Herman Lee. So, two guitar players. One bass player. Marco Verdone from Be The Wolf. My favorite bass player. Drummer. Oh, yeah. My favorite drummer ever. Chad Smith. Red Hot Chili Peppers. And the singer, well, uh, Vortex, X Vortex. So perfect band. Yes, a true dream team. Remember that you can find our official merchandise and our signed album in our official shop, frozencrown.bcartel.com. Italian tradition that you love from the bottom of your heart. Italian aperitivo. Oh, this, this is something I really, you know, I'm not hating, but, you know, it's something I, I've never been into. I'm quite against all the useless things, you know, so an aperitivo has no use other than, you know, stay with other people and have fun. All things I don't really like, you know. I had fun once, it was awful. <laughs> Only if that fun is uh, useful in some way, you know, yes. for someone. I have some questions from some friends. Okay. <laughs> what do you hate most? Stay with people outside enjoying fresh air and sun? Mm. Or composing in rehearsal room with the other people? <laughs> <laughs> Yes! Ah, c'era il plot twist, no? Capito? Eh no, questa, questa, I would prefer to stay outside, uh, sun, 
you know, <laughs> nature, possibly alone, but... Rather than having someone telling what to do in the, in the rehearsal room. room. <laughs> yes, yeah. This question was brilliant. If you had the chance to spend one day with one of these people, mm. who would you choose between? Herman Lee or Valeria Marini? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's very hard. Ciao. Of course, for, for different reasons, but... Um, with Valeria Marini talking about Dragon Force and Herman Lee. I think that if Herman sees uh, Valeria Marini, he would comprehend. Would you rather spend the day with Ingrid Malmsteen or me? Ingrid Malmsteen, <laughs> of course. Thank you. Allora Fede, cosa ti manca di più del Sud Italia? Ah, era questa domanda. Allora, innanzitutto sono felicissimo di vederlo. Sì. I'm so happy to see Niso right now. I think, uh, you know, I think the atmosphere, you know, play the, the places, you know, the, that kind of uh, carefree vibes you can uh, bring in my hometown but I think the only reason why I have that carefree uh, is because I don't work there by the way awesome question every time you know there's something different in the cup Iki had a cappuccino which was not really cappuccino Italian cappuccino I yeah. had the same I had the same today too ah you had <laughs> What about you? Uh, water. Water. <laughs> Cold and sparkly. You declared it. You don't like fun. Yeah. <laughs> Vogliamo sentire cinque frasi che tu conosci in spagnolo, portoghese, tedesco, <laughs> giapponese e russo. <laughs> Entra <laughs> Ma Iki, ma come va? Allora, questa è una domanda di uno che mi vuole mettere in difficoltà. Ok, Spanish me encanta. Portuguese. Portuguese. Uh... <laughs> Obrigado. I don't But it's not the sentence. No. Russian, I don't know. Japanese, arigato gozaimas. Tedesco, du hast. Du hast mich gefragt. Ich hab nicht. Yes, It's time for metal trivia. You don't have time to think about your answers, okay? Okay. Name one Nightwish song sang by each of the three singers. So one from Taria. Album Path. <laughs> one from Annette. Oh, yeah. Um... Story time. Yes, and one from floor. Ah! Uh, <laughs> Elan, 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 yeah. uh, Elan. Yeah! <laughs> Name five albums that mean the most to you. Also something that maybe we don't expect. Hmm. The Black Market Music by Placebo. I would say The Gallery by Dark Tranquility. I would say Hate Breeder by Children of Bodom. Ah, uh, this is very hard. This is very hard. Of course, five is impossible, you know. Yes, but uh, you know, the first ones that pop up to your mind. I would say Borknagar Earth, because uh, I wouldn't be able to really tell my favorite album by Borknagar, because I love them all, but I think that album has got a specific um, meaning for me. It was uh, my overall favorite. It It featured my favorite lineup, you know, it, it still had Wintersorg, Vortex and Lars, of course, singing. You know, in my opinion, the, the best. And I would say a Kiss album, which would be Creatures of the Night. Da dove nasce il tuo spirito da trapper? <laughs> <laughs> eh, dallo swag. Everything starts from swag. Swag. Uh, swag is the most important thing in life. Swag. Money, bitch. That's all I'm really into. 
Vorrei sapere quattro frasi in fiulano che hai imparato qui da noi. C'è mo' capitano! <ride> e gli occhiali! Ah, frasi in fiulano che hai imparato qua da noi! Dai, dai! C'è bel frut, c'è bel frut! Vai, top! Since you spend most of your day working because you also enjoy working, what would you do if you die tomorrow? Hmm. I, I would die. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, maybe she uh, meant if you knew you're going to die tomorrow, what are you going to do today? Since all of our friends out there know that you are Italian to the bone hmm. and they love when you get mad, hmm. tell us three things you hate. Mm. <laughs> you know, people... In general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People, the end. Um, you know, people that don't pay attention to things, you know, superficial persons. Uh, and speaking of this, you know, uh, That could be applied to music, but as well to kitchen, you know. How many things? Three, three and quickly. <laughs> ah, quickly, quickly. <laughs> yes. People that instead of cooking very simple and effective dishes with very simple preparations, just want to overdo it and try to make something fancy, you know, like, uh, yeah, some filled uh, curry chicken cooked in the oven under uh, uh, almond uh, pate or something. You know, that's something I really hate. I, I mean, why don't you really, I mean, you are not even able to make a tomato pasta or something like that, you know. Why, why do you want to make something fancy? Just stick with the basics, you know, and, and, and let, leave me eat something good at least, you know. It's not like you have to experiment. I hate people that want to experiment, you know, just for the sake of experimenting. Yeah. So this, is, this was three. <laughs> allora, qual è il tuo piatto tipico preferito italiano, giapponese, pugliese, friulano? Il frico non vale, non vale. Devi trovare un'altra pietanza locale. Ovviamente. Il frigo non vale. Ma il formati frant che è? Vale. È, è friulano? Sì. Formati frant. Cioè io il formati lo, <ride> lo amo, diciamo. Pugliese, le orecchiette che cucine di rape, ovviamente. Italiano giapponese. Gli occhiali mi mettono in difficoltà. <ride> cioè non riesco. I can't avoid thinking of him now. Maybe carbonara. Mm, I think... Uh, Pork gyoza. This is a question coming from Daniele, one member of our Frozen Crown family. In your life, do you listen most to metal or trap music? <laughs> um, I don't really listen to metal, that's for sure. <laughs> Grazie Daniele, ciao. So, since you are the frontman in your band Be The Wolf, Why did you choose to leave this role to a female singer when founding Frozen Crown? And who's that singer? She's a blonde one. Ah, oh, blonde one. <laughs> nice girl, funny girl. <laughs> of course, this needs some backstory. I had been a frontman until I decided to create Frozen Crown. And Frozen Crown were actually meant to be a project where I was going to be the lead singer. I remember I made a couple of songs which were Nether Storm and uh, Fade No More. As you know that from a debut album, The Fallen King. Uh, so those were the first two songs I ever wrote for Frozen Crown. And I was just creating the demos for those songs. And then I remember I listened to a Devin Townsend song, which was called Fallout. Still, right now, my favorite song by Devin Townsend. And it featured Anneke Van Giersbergen. Anneke Van Giersbergen. Anneke, quella rossa. Anneke Van Giersbergen, one of my favorite singers. Yeah, okay. Uh, by the way, I listened to that song. I had a fixation for that song. I still have. I, I love it, really. I don't know if I ever told you this. No, no. It, it sounds new to me too. I capito qual è. Never to return. Try I am fairy floor. 
può essere sì che l'abbiamo sentita anche insieme. Una bomba di canzoni. <ride> tu was like, mm, I could maybe include a female singer to, to sing some parts, uh, you know, to create some diversity, you know, to, to just sing uh, things, uh, you know, in contrast with me, with my own vocals. So I started searching for uh, singers which were going to have maybe a guest singer role in that project, you know, in Frozen Crown. I made some auditions and I sent to them to Infinity, which was actually written with uh, Fallout by David Townsend in mind. And written specifically for a female singer to sing. All the female singers I was uh, proposing the song to were of course singing that with the kind of um, operatic vocals. Yes. Like, oh! Some of them were pretty awesome too. But I don't know, I, I was not really that much convinced about that. Later on, I remember I... I remember I saw your profile on, uh, on social networks and uh, you looked to me like a pretty, you know, uh, bad person. I was trying a lot of singers, so I was like, you know, why not? I'm sending the song also to this girl. And uh, when she sent me the song back, I had this kind of... Uh, I suddenly had like a vision, you know. She was singing the song with a rock approach, rather than with operatic vocals. I would say not even rock. I, I think yes, more power metal. No, but, but it, was, it was more like, uh, maybe not rock, but it was maybe a, more like a pop. Uh, yes. It was uh, closer to Annette from Nightwish, rather than Taria, for example. It sounded great, but most importantly, it gave me an idea, you know. So, uh, I remember I sent to her Fail No More, and I told her, please, try to sing these parts. I had already sung my own parts, and uh, then I made her sing the harmonized part for the pre-chorus and then the lead part for the chorus. She sent back the song to me with my own vocals as well. And the funny thing is I wasn't able to tell which one was her voice and my voice. I mean, those uh, were yes. like, uh, you know, Magical. melted together. Yes, I was, mm. uh, you know excited because uh, yes they were fitting perfectly together yeah together and uh, they were melting you know you couldn't tell which one was me which one was her and i had this kind of vision you know because i, I was like uh, oh wait all bands are uh, doing the beauty and beast combination you know like uh, female singing all sweet and melodic and the male singing more aggressive you know the male usually singing lower Yes. and the female usually singing higher. I have this kind of high voice, you yes. know, I go pretty high, uh, of course, especially with the wall. And I found it really interesting for once to listen to a band which was not using the male and the female vocals the same way everybody was using them, you know? Yes. I was like, yeah, I would listen to a band like this. And most importantly, having been a lead singer for ages myself, I found the backing vocalist role to be very interesting. Uh, that's something I'm really enjoying doing, uh, especially live. In, in Frozen Crown, I think that's my ideal role. I really love to be a backing vocalist. It's something that has to do with the fact you don't have all the attention on you. You can maybe focus better on uh, what you're doing while you have to, to be all pretty and uh, <laughs> You know, entertaining. Yeah, in entertaining people around, you know. I prefer to stay in the back, you know. Of course, she is the front woman and she is the face of the band. I really like to stay in the shadows. Would you rather share your food with someone else or let someone else tell you what to do? No, Fabiola. <laughs> she knows me quite well. <laughs> I uh, think uh, I would choose to have someone tell me what to do because he can still tell me what to do but I would do as I want anyway at least it's not going to steal my food Qual è stata la tua prima chitarra? Ah, it was uh, the white Ibanez you can see in the Everwinter video for example that was my very first electric guitar because my first guitar was not mine, it was my father's guitar and it was a Suzuki acoustic guitar. I'll tell you the album title and you have to tell me the band. Ah, are you ready? <laughs> 
Siren Charms. In Flames. Rewind. Vasco Rossi. Endless Forms Most Beautiful. Uh, Nightwish. Dynasty. Kiss. <laughs> Design Your Universe. Oh, Madonna, che c***o so? <ride> da, Madonna, ma ce l'ho qua, ce l'ho. Ma... Redhead. Porca... Ma epica. Yes. Ma epica, I... I um, eh, vabbè. vabbè. <ride> Let's go on. Imago. Be the wall. Lullabies for the dormant mind. Ma che è sto titolo? <ride> Ma che so, questi sono una cosa tipo ginger, sono una cosa moderna. The seventh sign. Of course, Ingway J. Mountain, my favorite. Screaming for vengeance. Yes, uh, Madonna. Ma come cazzo faccio a non ricordarmelo? <laughs> you have it here, here, it's easy. But... <laughs> Judas Priest. Chameleon. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Halloween. It's too easy, something wild. Children of Bottom. War Eternal. War Eternal, Arch Enemy. Yes. Yom's Viking. Yom's Viking, it could be an Amon Amar yes. album. Yes, great. Legendary Tales. Benissimo, <ride> ma che... Mi hanno detto nel pallone <ride> con le tue cose. Cioè, conosco benissimo le Legendary Tales, cazzo di parola. La mia mano? Io te lo giuro che Legendary Tales... <ride> cioè, l'ho ascoltato 800 miliardi di volte. <ride> ma Rhapsody? Ma poi... <ride> Rhapsody, cioè. Are you ready for my favorite game? Your favorite game? Yes. How much do you know, Jade? Which one do I prefer between Kira Knightley or Kate Blanchett? They are both your thing, you know. <laughs> uh, I, could, I think there could, couldn't be worse, really. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman or Al Pacino? You don't even know <laughs> any of them. Dragons or unicorns? Ah, uh, this is quite hard. This is hard because I think dragons, but unicorns is more of a novelty. It's more one of your recent crushes. Yes. Mm. So? Uh, so right now, uni unicorns. No dragons. And but in so fact, it's loud. but in fact, I told you the first one. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Cereals and milk or canned tuna? Mm, like Icky would say, serial killer. What made you start playing an instrument and composing songs? I had this guitar, which belonged to my father. Uh, it was an uh, acoustic guitar. I had no memory. I was really less than a kid. I just remember he was responsible of uh, teaching me some basic uh, chords. And I had this cassette of uh, Italian songwriters, Baglioni, there was like um, Margherita by Cocciante, was one of the first uh, songs I ever learned to play chords for. And of course, all the artists that my father was listening to, which were Gino Paoli, um, Paolo Conte, and um, De Fabrizio De André, and of course, uh, Pino Daniele which we mentioned in the, the other video with Fabiola. My father started teaching me some basic, uh, basic stuff and then I really started taking lessons, I think around... Uh, I was in elementary school. My teacher was called Pietro, was a folk guitar player, tarantola, all that, that kind of uh, southern uh, stuff. He really toured uh, all around the world made a lot of festivals, he was a very cool person and he was also, I think, a life teacher for me like a role model, 
you would say. I think that that was quite um, important because we didn't really start it with uh, all that kind of uh, technical stuff, you know. I mean, of course, we started reading the pentagram and I started playing some basic songs like, uh, yeah, like uh, Happy Birthday, <laughs> I don't know, you know. I mean, songs using only G, A and B notes and then uh, started adding some more things, then some uh, first position chords but what really made the difference and had a huge impact on me was the fact that he never focused that much on technical stuff but rather on you know analyze the concept behind things you know both my father and uh, Pietro my guitar teacher were like uh, two faces of, of the same coin you know they were both persons of culture but very different one from the other and they both contributed to build my personality they made me become what I'm today I mean I always consider myself not to be a guitar player I just know some things that are actually functional to what I'm uh, I'm writing you know but I'm more a creator you know I'm a person that loves to create things since the very beginning I really had this urge to draw to write uh, stories to draw comics all that kind of stuff. Also with music I had this kind of approach. I always wanted to tell stories, you know. Guitar was just a tool, was, a, was just an instrument, literally. I always had this kind of a attitude towards the world, learned to ask myself questions, to try to understand why things were working that way, what was actually working, what was not working. So I think those guitar lessons weren't properly guitar lessons. I really developed all my personality and uh, what I am today in relation to music. I had this will to tell stories. And now, which are your main musical influences? It would be very hard to identify my influences. I would definitely say a lot of bands from Norway. Borknagar are my favorite band ever. There was that avant-garde scene, as it was called, um, Arcturus, then there were Winds, uh, of course Ulver. There were all these uh, musicians from Norway that were, you know, gravitating around black metal, which I'm a big fan of, but with uh, more keyboards, adding a lot more complexity in their music, adding a lot of clean vocals. For example, Vortex has always been one of my greatest influences as a singer. And then, of course, a lot of Swedish bands, uh, Dark Tranquility and In Flames above all. These are really the only metal bands I've been literally following from the very beginning until now. Nevermore, of course, uh, which you are a great fan of uh, as well. Uh, that, of course, I'm, I'm not able to follow anymore, sadly, because of uh, what happened. I think, yeah, Sweden and Norway, both, you know, death metal and black metal had a lot of impact on me. And also, a lot of those um, gothic Doom bands like Anathema or Anathema. In Italy we say Anathema. Together with Borknagar, they're probably you know my favorite band ever. Also later when they started playing rock, you know, a lot of Beatle Wolf songs came straight from I don't know Alternative 4 or uh, Natural Disaster, Catatonia as well, or Opeth. Aside from metal, of course, I listened to a lot of stuff. Band that really had a huge impact on me were Placebo. I listened to them when I was 14 years old. I was in uh, England. I discovered that album which was uh, black market music. That album really changed my life. The music system is changing fast. What do you see in the future? Well, of course, a lot more of uh, these streaming services, of which I'm not a fan of. Streaming services are going to be the norm. You're going to pay monthly fee to stream anything, of course. Nowadays, you know, you are basically never owning anything. I mean, video games, uh, you're not owning them. You're just paying a fee to play them monthly, you know. I really despise Spotify. I don't own an account. Lo dico tanto. Yeah, I don't like um, the idea of music being listened, being heard to while you're doing other things. I mean, to me, music is a sacred, it's something you... I mean, when you're listening to music, you're just listening to music, you know. When you're reading a book, you're reading a book, period. You're not reading a book while you're cooking or while you're uh, chatting with another person, you know. Uh, so, 
when you listen to music, I think you should give music the right attention. And I think the plague of these years is the multitasking and the, the fact that people judge music without even properly listening to it. People are hearing music right now. They're not listening to music. That's, that's different. Yeah, I don't like Spotify. I don't like uh, the streaming services. This is not because I'm into that kind of, you know, I hate streaming, buy albums. No, I don't care about that. You know, you could listen to our album on uh, YouTube. You could make cassettes, download uh, it uh, from whatever. I mean, you could uh, earn that album in any way possible. I mean, if you want to support us, uh, we would be very happy, but I would prefer someone that doesn't have money to buy our album and downloads it from torrents rather than uh, someone who actually buy our album and never ever listen to it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with your friend, to subscribe to our channel, to put a like and a comment. See you next time!